I can't get enough of you. Subscribe, like, and share. The udon was expensive, but it was worth the price. After the meal, Seon moved to pay for her share, but Taejun had already paid without her noticing. Thank you for the meal, director. Yes, thank you as well. His continued normal and polite responses made Seon increasingly anxious as time passed. It's pretty late already. I'll give you a ride home. Come with me. He didn't talk about anything but work during dinner. This is the first time we have talked about something productive, isn't it? She suspected he might be storing up his scathing remarks to unleash them all at once. I didn't expect to actually have a normal company dinner. I thought it was a fake team. Even as she got back into Taejun's car, she remained tense, not knowing when she might be thrown out again. But still, it's Taejun we are talking about here. I can't lower my guard until I get home. Before she knew it, they were close to her home. In the quiet air, her phone's vibration sounded particularly loud. It was Hiwuk. Should I answer him? Unlike yesterday, she was pleased to receive Hiwuk's call. It was also an opportunity to show director Kim Taejun how good her relationship with her boyfriend really was. Director, may I take this call? Go ahead. With Taejun's permission, Soon smiled and answered the phone with a bright, elevated tone. Appa, are you home? Did you finish work? Were you about to sleep? No, I was still with company. You sure work hard. Did you have dinner? Of course, what about you? Uh, yes, I already did. Hey, Soon. You know. Suddenly, there was a noise. Taejun started coughing as if something had gone down the wrong way. Uh, what did you say? I'm sorry, Appa, wait a moment. Soon hurriedly covered the phone's microphone, but Hiwook seemed to have noticed. Unable to stand it, Soon mouthed to Taejun, Are you okay? Taejun waved his hand, indicating she could continue her call. What's that? I hear someone's voice. Oh, it's nothing. What were you saying? Well, I wanted to tell you that. I'm going on a sudden business trip this weekend. Oh, a business trip? Where? To Japan. It's a one night, two day trip. So I'll leave on Saturday and return on Sunday. But that date was. Can you look after my mom on Saturday and Sunday? My dad has an important golf appointment. Sure, I can do that. Although she was disappointed, she didn't hesitate to agree. Let's have fun when I get back. Okay, take care. This is not what I expected. Yes. Taejun, noticing Soon's expression change after she ended the call, asked, Your boyfriend has a business trip this weekend? Is it so bad that he's going on a business trip? Did you want to go with him? Are you going to take care of his mom again? His first question made her defensive, but she couldn't respond to the second one. Soon thought about how to frame her answer in a way that would end Taejun's interference. She didn't want any more of his involvement. Do you need help? Would you like me to give you a special weekend? Suddenly, Taejun made a proposal. Want to work overtime this weekend? What's fine about it? You can go home on time tomorrow. However, you'll have to work during the weekend. Of course, I'll pay you the same for working overtime. No, it's fine, director. This time, Soon answered Taejun's proposal with sincerity. I like taking care of his mom. I want to do well by her. She meant it. After all, she had given part of herself to her. How could she dislike someone she had shared a part of herself with? It would never be possible. Thank you for your concern. Her expression was calm, but Taejun's eyes trembled slightly. He nearly slammed on the brakes. Ha, huh. is that so? What kind of woman is this? Han Soon hadn't changed at all in 20 years. When her feelings for him had seemed foolish, it was at least cute. What should he call this extreme pushover? Miss Han Soon. Yes, make sure to work late tomorrow. In three days on Sunday, everything would end. Then, she would have to face reality. Taejun suppressed his rising anger, 
looking forward to the impending storm. Soon, they arrived in front of Soon's house. Soon quickly got out of the car, hoping to avoid any further trouble. Thank you for the ride. Drive safely, director. But Taejun's voice stopped her. He approached and handed her a paper bag from the back seat. Eel sushi. Eat it at home. When they left the restaurant, Taejun had a paper bag in his hand. She thought he bought it for himself to eat later, but he handed it to her instead. No, it's fine. You have it, director. You said you liked eel. Did I? She vaguely remembered praising eel rice bowls when she was drunk last week. It felt like a punishment rather than a gift. Embarrassed, Soon accepted the paper bag Taejun handed her. After handing her the bag, Taejun immediately left. It was a perfect ending. Soon stood there, staring at the departing car. The eel sushi set was so expensive, she hadn't even looked at it. The eel sushi set was too expensive to even look at. The Kim Taejun who sarcastically mocked Soon yesterday for having no pride, and the one who treated her to a delicious meal and gave her a ride today seemed like two completely different people. He must have felt really sorry for what he said to me yesterday. Soon, inherently a kind person who never lost hope in others, reached this conclusion. Time passed and Saturday arrived. Having promised Hee-wook, Soon went to the hospital where Mal Hee was admitted. She hadn't contacted Hee-wook because he seemed busy, but she woke up early and arrived early as well. Hello, mother. Yes, you're here. Last Saturday, she had run out of the hospital in a fit after an argument with Hee Jean, and she worried that things might be awkward with Mal Hee. However, Mal Hee didn't seem uncomfortable at all. It seemed Hee-wook had spoken well to her as he said, No more fighting. I thought you were busy. Aren't you pushing yourself too hard to come here? No, it's okay. I just woke up a little earlier today. How have you been this week? The nurse said you're doing much better. I feel better than last week. That's good. You'll keep getting better. That's nice to hear. I hope that you keep. Just as she took a breath, the hospital room door opened. Mother, how have you been? I came back to visit you. That voice, isn't that? Oh my, Miss Soon, are you here too? Long time no see. Soon, when did you get here? Appa? I thought you were going on a business trip today. Soon and Hewok looked at each other in surprise. Hello, mother. I'm here again. It was Hyunji who had come to visit Malhi with Hewok. Oh, you're back. It's nice to see you. Have a seat. Mother, these flowers remind me of you. Aren't they pretty? Hyunji handed Malhi a bouquet. Oh, you didn't have to bring these. Just you coming is enough. Malhi's face, which had been indifferent while with Soon, lit up. You need to see pretty things like this, especially at times like this. Their conversation was full of affection. Malhi looked revitalized by Hyunji's bright energy, as if she could be discharged immediately. Soon, could you put these flowers in a vase? Hyunji handed the bouquet to Soon, pointing to the vase by the window. Feeling dazed, Soon accepted the bouquet. She discarded the flowers in the vase and was washing it when she heard Hyunji's voice through the open bathroom door. I'm going on a business trip to Japan with lawyer Yang today. He said he had to visit his mother's hospital before leaving, so I decided to come along. Emerging from the bathroom with the vase, Soon stared at Hiwook. Appa, they're going together? Hiwook avoided her gaze, feeling guilty for not telling her. Let's not make a big deal out of this. It's a business trip, not a vacation. Determined to stay calm, Soon moved to place the flowers in the vase. Hyunji made a joke. Are you jealous, Soon? Lawyer Yang is mine for the next two days. Right. Have a safe trip. Soon, feeling detached, responded expressionlessly and started arranging the flowers. As she moved to place the vase by the window, Hyunji, who had stood up suddenly, 
collided with Soeun, causing the vase to shatter. Hyunji also lost her balance, and Soeun quickly grabbed her, but Hyunji ended up falling to the floor anyway. The flowers scattered messily. Hyunji, bracing herself on the floor, had a shard of the vase lodged in her palm. Are you okay, Hyunji? Soeun asked, concerned. Hyunji grimaced in pain. Blood welled up from the shard embedded in her palm, but it was only a minor cut. Hyuk rushed over and helped Hyunji up. Soeun, what are you doing? No, Appa. I mean, Lawyer Yang. Hyunji hastily stopped Hyuk, who was scolding Soeun. Soeun felt a chill run down her spine. Hyuk scolding her and Hyunji calling him, Appa, was a confusing and unsettling sight. While Soeun frowned, Hyunji spoke calmly. I'm fine. It's just a little scratch. Hyunji took a handkerchief from her pocket and wiped her palm. Soeun recognized the handkerchief as the same one Hiwook had at Omotisando Hills last week. Soeun, I must have been too playful. I'm sorry. It must have bothered you. I was too careless with my joke. Please don't be upset. Hyunji's words implied that Soeun had deliberately pushed her because she couldn't control her emotions. Soeun, who had resolved to maintain her composure, felt a wave of anger rising within her. It was true that Hyunji's careless words bothered her, but she had never deliberately pushed Hyunji. We bumped into each other. I didn't push you on purpose. So, please don't misunderstand. You don't need to worry about my feelings. It was upsetting to have to speak so firmly to Hyunji, who was smiling sweetly, but Soeun conveyed her message clearly. She decided not to hold back on things that could make her ill if she didn't express them. Afterward, Soeun saw Hiwook and Hyunji off to the parking lot. It was nice seeing you, Soeun. Let's meet again. Yes. Have a good trip. Oh, by the way, Soeun, you need to check our refrigerator sometime. I'll invite you over soon. After exchanging trivial farewells, Hyunji got into the car first. Before getting into the driver's seat, Hiwook reminded Soeun, Father said he'll be here by three. Just stay with mom until then, please. Okay, have a good trip. I hope it goes well. Thanks. I'll call you when I get back. And Hiwook, I have a favor to ask. Soeun stopped Hiwook as he was about to turn away. She mustered the courage to speak, feeling that she would regret it if she didn't say it now. It was a childish and petty request, but she really hoped he would comply. I'm a bit hurt that you didn't tell anyone about my surgery. I don't care about others, but I wish you had told lawyer Choi Hyunji. What? Hey! But Hiwook's face twisted in shock. Why are you saying such things right before my important business trip? His eyes, looking at her with disbelief, seemed to be devoid of affection. That's already settled. I want to get closer to lawyer Choi Hyunji too. If she comes to visit the hospital, it's right to tell her. Hiding it is just ridiculous. Why bring that up out of the blue? Are you hoping my business trip fails? What are you talking about? That's what you're implying. His voice grew louder, echoing through the parking lot. Hiwook paused, then spoke again in a quiet voice. Why are you acting so low? Isn't that too harsh? No, your words were harsher. If I had known you'd milk it this much, I would have stopped you with all my might when you said you wanted to have the surgery. Soon, I'm really sorry, but now, he was truly fed up. He wanted to say more, but he couldn't bring himself to speak. What was left unsaid was the irreparable end. Let's talk when I get back. Hewitt got into the car as if escaping. Without a word of goodbye to the resentful Soon, he drove out of the parking lot. Late afternoon, at the Future Service team office, Soon was absorbed in disassembling an old folder phone. No, in truth, she was anything but absorbed. It felt like her heart was broken. 
Something seemed blocked, preventing her from thinking clearly. I'm someone who fixes broken things, but I can't fix myself. She had vowed not to fight with Hewook anymore, but her stubbornness over something that wouldn't change seemed to have further strained their relationship, which had just started to improve. No, I did well. At least I said what I wanted to say. Encouraging herself with the little courage she had shown, Soon continued fixing the phone. Her future father-in-law, who had gone to an important golf meeting, returned at four. Leaving the hospital, Soon headed to the office, thinking that working might help her feel better. Fixing machines was a satisfying job. Identifying the problem with a machine, determining which part to replace to make it work, and seeing it function as hypothesized was exhilarating. Meeting people who were happy with the repaired machines was also fulfilling. I should have just focused on work and not bothered with relationships. She had been content with such a life when she was solely dedicated to work. As various thoughts crossed her mind, trying to comfort herself, she heard footsteps nearby. She turned her head toward the sound. Kim Taejun, who usually looked at people with half-open eyes, was now staring at her with wide eyes. Manager Han, why are you here on the weekend? He seemed surprised by her working on the weekend. I just wanted to come to work. And then claim overtime pay? Oh, it's not like that. This doesn't seem like future service teamwork. But it's still company work. K Electronic Service doesn't make people work on Saturday afternoons. Why is he doing this? I just came here because I wanted to clear my mind with work. But I can't tell him that. Aren't you here to work too? Do you think you and I are the same? Uh, yes. I forgot this side of him. No, we're different. Soon mumbled and went back to tinkering with the phone. Besides, you're fixing a flip phone. What a waste of time. Taejun looked at her sharply and criticized her. How is that valuable? It's foolish. Taejun was mocking customers who still used flip phones, but to Soon, it felt like a jab at herself for clinging to a deteriorating relationship. Still, she felt wronged. She wanted to explain to Taejun why she was fixing this phone. There's a customer who always comes to me. She's turning 80 this year, and she insists on using this phone. She can't afford a new one and says she doesn't know if she'll live until tomorrow or the day after, so she can't buy a new one. Using a smartphone is out of the question for her. She contacted me personally, and I was supposed to fix this for her today, but I couldn't. If I had come to work this morning, I could have fixed it. K Electronic Service operates on alternate Saturday mornings, with only willing employees working. If Soon hadn't gone to the hospital, the customer could have received her phone earlier. So I'm worried. Can I just fix it now? There's no reason you can't. But don't overwork yourself. It's foolish to fall ill during the week because you worked too hard over the weekend. He was concerned about her health, speaking in his indifferent tone. It was just typical, polite concern from a superior. Fix it quickly and leave. Don't waste time on something that can't be fixed. Her throat tightened with emotion, preventing Soen from responding to Taejun's concern. Noticing her lack of response, Taejun called out to her. Hey! Soen couldn't answer and lowered her head. Don't speak kindly to me. No, don't touch me. I feel like I might burst into tears. People armored against the world's harsh words and rough treatment can crumble pathetically from a single kind word. He had somehow grabbed her chair and turned it around. Are you okay? You look really tired. He leaned in, narrowing his eyes with concern and brought his face closer to hers. Tell me what's wrong. I'll listen. His warm, gentle voice pierced deep into her heart.